Hello, my name's Sue Povel. I'm a storyteller based in Hoy Lake in England and I'm going to tell you a story today that comes from the Jewish tradition. You might have heard it before. It's called The Tailor. Once there was a tailor. He was known for miles round for the beauty of his clothes and the fineness of his stitches. People would come from here and there and everywhere to have their clothes made by this tailor. Including the Queen. She would sweep into his shop, followed by her ladies-in-waiting and well, other hangers-on from the court. She'd make this demand of the tailor and that demand of the tailor and he'd bob his head and he would bow and he'd say, yes ma'am, yes ma'am whatever you'd like. Then she'd sweep out of the shop, followed by her ladies-in-waiting and the other hangers-on. One time the Queen came to visit. She looked the tailor up and down and she said, Excuse me, tailor. I don't understand. Why is it that you make such beautiful clothes for everybody else and that you are a, well let's just say I'm sure I can see your underpants through those trousers well, the tailor he bobbed his head and he said I'm sorry ma'am I'm I really mean to cause no offense but I'm so busy making clothes for everybody else I just don't have time to make any for myself I see, said the Queen. And with that she swept out of the shop followed by her ladies in waiting and the other hangers on. But a couple of days later a courtier arrived and he was holding in his arms a bolt of cloth. He placed the cloth down on the tailor's table and he said, The Queen wishes me to inform you that this cloth is for you and you alone to make yourself some clothes for when she comes to visit. And with that he too swept out of the shop. The cloth for me? So the tell from the Queen? He couldn't wait for the other customers to leave his shop and then he ran over to the clock and he picked up the edge. Oh, it was as soft and smooth and light as silk. It was as strong as sackcloth. This cloth would take the finest of finest stitches. Taylor held up the, the cloth to the light. He saw that it shone in many different colours as he moved it. It was purple, it was blue, it was green, it was orange, it was red, it was yellow, it was gold, it was silver. Oh. The tailor knew that whichever clothes he made from this cloth, they would be stunning. So that night, after he'd finished his work for all his customers, he took that cloth up to his workshop. He spread it out on his table. He measured it out. He scratched his chin and he knew what he was going to make. He took his chalk and he drew out a pattern. He took his scissors and he cut that pattern out. And then he spent the night stitching. And in the morning, 
he'd made himself a coat. A coat with sleeves that came down to the end of his thumbs. A coat that skimmed his ankles, that was double-breasted, double-vented, and looked wonderful. And when the tailor put that coat on, he felt magnificent. And when he walked around the town, everybody said, oh, here comes the tailor. Doesn't he look smart in his coat of many colours? Huh? He's almost a work of art. And the tailor, he wore that coat. And he wore it and he wore it and he wore it till he almost wore it out. Then he took that coat back up to his workshop. He laid it on the table. He measured it up. Scratched his chin. Knew what he was going to make. Took out his chalk. He measured the pack now. He took out his scissors. He cut the pack now. And he spent all night stitching. And in the morning, he'd made himself a jacket with sleeves down to his wrists. It came down to halfway down his thighs. It was single breasted, single vented, nice shiny buttons. And when the tailor put that jacket on, he felt magnificent. And when he walked around the town, everybody said, oh, here comes the tailor. Doesn't he look smart in his jacket of many colours? Why, he's almost a work of art. And the tailor, he wore that jacket and he wore it and he wore it and he wore it till he almost wore it out. And then he took it up to his workshop. He laid it on the table. He measured it up. Scratched his chin. Decided what he was going to make. Then he took out his chalk and he drew out the pattern. He took out his scissors and he cut the pattern out. And he spent the night, not quite as long as before, but still, stitching. And in the morning, he'd made the most beautiful waistcoat. It came down to his hips. He had a little tie in the back. And he felt magnificent when he put that waistcoat. And then he walked around the town and everybody, and I mean everybody, said, oh, here comes the tailor. Doesn't he look smart in his waistcoat of many colours? Well, he's almost a work of art. And the tailor, he wore that waistcoat and he wore it and he wore it and he wore it till he almost wore it out. Then he took it up to his workshop. He laid it on his table. He measured it out. Scratched his chin. Decided what he would make. He took his chalk and he drew out a pattern. He took his scissors and he cut that pattern out. And he spent, well, some of the night stitching. And he made himself a cravat, beautiful cravat, all ruffled at his neck and down to his tummy. And when the tailor put that cravat on, he felt magnificent. 
And when he walked around the town, everybody said, here comes the tailor. Doesn't he look smart in his cravat of many colours? He's almost a work of art. And the tailor, he wore that cravat and he wore it and he wore it and he wore it till he almost wore it out. Then he took it back to his workshop. He placed it on his table. Scratched his chin. Decided what he would make. No need to measure this time. He's running out of cloth. He takes his chalk. And he draws out a pan. He takes his scissors and he cuts the pattern out. He takes his needle and thread and he stitches for maybe an hour or so. And when he's finished, he's made himself a set of buttons. Buttons that shine with different colours depending on which way he moves and he stitched those buttons to his slightly tatty jacket and when he wore them he felt magnificent and when he walked around the town everybody said here comes the tailor doesn't he look smart in his buttons of many colors He's almost a work of art. and uh, But the tailor, he wore those buttons and he wore them and he wore them and he wore them till he almost wore them out. And then he took them up to his workshop. He placed them on his table, scratched his chin. But to be honest, there was nothing else he could make from that beautiful bowl of cloth that the Queen had given him. But then he smiled. He smiled because the tailor knew that while he might not be able to make anything to wear, he'd made something much, much more important because the tailor had made the story.